We are literally stardust. And yes, you're alive in this universe, but there's another way to look at it. The universe is alive within you. And we can all sit here and look up at the night sky and say, yes, we have kinship with the cosmos. Your documentary, Cosmos, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Cosmos, Cosmos. I think it's a, it might be an English. You're thing. a Brit. I don't know or care okay. how you pronounce I'll anything. It's all okay. English. So <laughs> you can <could> Cosmos, say. <laughs> Cosmos. Okay. You will never find an American correcting British pronunciation. Well, it happens sometimes. Because we just don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so objective truth and, and reality and feelings. One of the things I learned from that documentary, which was uh, honestly, I, I remember the day I found it. I shouldn't say this, but. I didn't have a lot of money, so I found it on some like dodgy, like pirated website. And I just, I watched, I think it was eight episodes. Security. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I watched them all that night. And I and then I went back and watched the previous one with Carl Sagan. Um, it just captivated me. And it has ever since. I actually would cite that as my, as the start of my fascination with the universe. And one of the really profound things I took from it, when we're talking about objective truth and feelings, is there's a scene in, in the documentary where you kind of like zoom out and it keeps going and going and going and going and going and going. And it made me, talking about objective truth and feelings, it made me feel so insignificant. I realized that I am objectively irrelevant. And that was a wonderful feeling because with that, it strips away the, the burden ego. of your own self-importance and ego. Um, do we matter? So the cosmic perspective is incompatible with your ego. Okay. I should say your ego is incompatible with the cosmic perspective. That's the proper way to order that sentence. The cosmic perspective shows you how small we are in size, in time, in space. And if you go in with a high ego, you might resist that. You might say, no, I'm important. I, but I think of it differently. The, we know one of the greatest gifts of modern astrophysics to civilization, dare I call it a gift, is the knowledge that the atoms of your body are traceable, not only to the Big Bang origin of the universe itself, but especially to stars that have manufactured those elements and later in their lives on death exploded scattering that enrichment across gas clouds so that their next generation of stars would have planets and on at least one of those planets, life. So, we are not just figuratively, we are literally stardust. So when you go out and look up at the night sky, yeah, your urge is, I'm small and that's large. And yes, you're alive in this universe, but there's another way to look at it. The universe is alive within you. You have kinship with the cosmos. That feeling, to me, is greater than any ego you could have possibly walked into the room with first. That feeling borders on spiritual, second. Third, we have trained ourselves to equate being special with being different. You're special. You do something, think some way that no one else does. So I'm special. Well, let me turn that on its head and say, Maybe we're special, not because we're different, but because we're the same. All humans are stardust. All humans share a chemistry with all, a biology with all other life on earth. There's one genesis on this earth. We have DNA in, you have DNA in common with a banana. I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> you can ask, well, where are the arms and legs? No, DNA goes deeper than that. DNA controls chemistry. It controls metabolism. It controls all kinds of things that are prescribed in the DNA, and that's where we have commonality with other life forms on Earth. So why not look around and say, 
I'm not special because I'm a different. I'm special because I'm the same as you, as others, as the tree, as the brook, as the animals, you know, the woodland creatures. And we can all sit here and look up at the night sky and say, yes, we have kinship with the cosmos. I feel large because of that, not small. You mentioned the pursuit of happiness earlier when you were talking about one of the central sort of like doctrine, doctrines of the American dream, that pursuit of, of happiness. And um, in, in, in what you've just said about the universe, I was, I was pondering where meaning is derived from. So I'll kind of ask the question at the same time, this happiness and meaning, where does, where does that come from in, in your perspective? What I have found is it's an urge people have to search for meaning. Is it under this rock, behind, metaphorically, right? Is it under a rock? I'm gonna search, on, is there meaning there? Is it behind a tree? Is if, if I join this group, will that, will, be, will I find meaning with them? If I, and I think, to my, okay, go ahead. But what you're doing is relegating meaning in your life to a search. And suppose you don't find meaning. That'd be a force of disappointment in your life. You're setting yourself up to be disappointed if you don't find meaning. So I have another idea. <clears throat> I, I use this for myself. I, it may or may not work for others. I recognized long ago that in a free society where I'm not enslaved and I'm not you know, an indentured servant and I have some freedom of choice, that I have the power to manufacture meaning in my life. I can make decisions about my own life that create the meaning. For me, a meaningful life is learning something new tomorrow that I didn't know yesterday. Otherwise, it's a wasted day. You know the prisoner who, who puts X's in the boxes on the wall for the day they get out? I have that in my head and the day that I get out is the day I die, all right? And what these boxes remind you of is every day you're alive, you're one day closer to death. So there's one fewer days in there to accomplish something that you might have wanted to accomplish. So I want to keep learning about our world, about each other, about things I don't otherwise know about. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor, become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.